Today we're going to learn about solving equations using the square root property of equality. Page 36 in your notebook. Our learning targets today are apply the square root property of equality to solve equations that include variables to the second power. Also, recognize the relationship between the number of solutions an equation has and the variable's exponent. So I want to begin by drawing the connection between linear and quadratic. So linear equations are equations that include variables to the first power. So a to the first power, x to the first power, m to the first power, p to the first power. We normally see these as just a, m, x, right, without a exponent of 1. But it's the multiplicative identity that, that allows us not to have to write the exponent of 1. And typically, these linear equations have one solution. Um, we learned about some special cases, but most of the equations that we've dealt with so far have resulted in one equation with an equation with one solution. So in this case, the solution to this equation would be 10. We only have one value that makes both the expressions equal each other. A quadratic is a includes a squared variable, so a variable to the second power. And you'll see this because the variable has an exponent of 2. Now, linear equations have an exponent of 1 and typically have one solution. Quadratics have an exponent of 2, and typically have two solutions. So there's going to be two values that make this equation true, or, or two values that when, sim when simplified for the variable make the two expressions equal each other. So let's learn about how we get those two values. So we have these two new ideas, squares, things that are being taken to the second power, and square roots, things that are under this box looking house thing. Squares and square roots are inverse operations. So just like addition undoes subtraction, and subtraction undoes addition. Squares undo square roots, and square roots undo squares. They're inverse operations. So what's a square? A square is a value that is multiplied by itself two times. So if we look at 9 squared, this means that 9 is being multiplied by itself twice. So 9 times 9. And coincidentally, 9 times 9 is 81. Interestingly enough, negative 9 squared is negative 9 times itself twice. And because a negative times a negative is a positive and 9 times 9 is 81, we get the same value or the same product for both 9 and negative 9. And this is the case for any opposite number. So 5 squared and negative 5 squared. These both give us the same value. We get, um, sorry, 5 times 5 is 25. And negative 5 times negative 5 is also 25. So the number and its opposites, when squared, will always give you the same product. And that kind of helps us understand square roots. So square roots, these reveal what value times itself equals the number that's being rooted. So if we're taking the square root of 81, we're trying to figure out what number times itself gives us 81. And there's two types of roots. There's the principal root, so that's like the positive um, square root, and there's the negative, or the opposite of the principal root, which would be the negative. And the reason why we have these two different types is because if you think about the square root of 81, what number times itself gives you 81? Well, we know that 9 times 9 gives us 81, so we know the square root of 81 equals 9, right? But 9 isn't the only value that multiplied by itself gives us 81. We also get the value negative 9. So this is why the opposite of the principal root comes into play. So the opposite of the principal root would be the, the negative of the principal root. And if the principal root is 81, then when we get the square root of 81, we get 9. And the negative in front makes it a negative 9. Because there are two numbers that give us 81 when we square them, 9 and negative 9. So that is why we have the principal root and the opposite. So sometimes in front of a plus or, uh, a square root sign, you'll see a plus or minus, and the plus refers to the principal root, and the minus refers to the opposite of the principal root with the minus inside. So before we move on, I just want to quickly draw your attention to this mental note. So square roots of negative values do not exist in the real number system. These are these are actually imaginary numbers. So what I mean when I say the square root of a negative value. So if you look at the square root of negative 16 versus the square root of 16. So we know that the square root of 16 has two answers. 
because there are two numbers when multiplied that gives us 16. 4 times 4 produces a positive 16. So that is one of our answers. Our second answer is negative 4 times negative 4 because this also produces a positive 16. So 4 and negative 4 multiply to a positive 16 when squared. Then what value times itself gives us a negative 16? And you're probably thinking negative 4. Well, negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16 because a negative times a negative is a positive. So when you have a square root of a negative number, the answer is no real solution because there is not a real solution for our negatives. Because there's no number times itself that gives us a negative value. Positive times a positive is a positive and a negative times a negative is a positive. So that brings us to defining the square root property of equality. So this property states that by taking the square root, and that's a way of abbreviating square root, of both expressions in an equation, sorry, states that by taking the square root of both expressions in an equation will produce an equivalent equation. So if we take the square root of the x squared and the b, then the result x equals plus or minus the square root of b produces an equation that is equivalent. So it is okay to, to square root both sides as long as you're making sure that you square root both sides. So you're probably wondering, x squared equals b is the same thing as x equals plus or minus b. And that is, that is true because when you take the square root of x squared and the square root of b, the square root undoes the square. These are inverse operations. So technically the exponent goes to 1. And in front of the square root, remember we've got the principal root and the negative root because there's always going to be two answers or two numbers that uh, give us the square root of whatever value we're taking. So that's why we have the plus or minus. And we know that uh, x to the first power is the same thing as x. So we could say that x equals the positive square root of b and x equals the negative square root of b. And remember, the negative sign is on the outside, so it is not a no-solution situation. Sometimes students get that confused. So this property is going to help us solve equations that have variables to the second power. Let's get into the first example. Use mathematical properties or tools to find the solution set of the equation. Present the answer in set notation. Make sure to use commas to separate multiple values in the set. So here we have step one, denote the variable side and the number side or the number expression. So here we have variable expression on the left, so we're going to make this our variable side and this our number expression. Step two is to simplify each expression. So is there any, are there any like terms here? No, there's no like terms. Is there anything we can simplify here? No, there's not. So we can move on to step three. And step three is apply inverse operations slash site properties to rearrange the equation to reveal the solution. So now we're going to start to solve. And when we're solving, remember, we're using this idea of sad map to figure out what numbers to eliminate first. So we're going to start with eliminating things that are being either added or subtracted. And we've got this 1 that's being added. So we're going to subtract 1 to both sides. So we have 64 in squared plus 1 minus 1 equals 10 minus 1. We just subtracted to both sides, so we use the subtraction property of equality. Now we can go ahead and simplify. We know that 1 minus 1 simplifies to 0. And 10 minus 1 simplifies to 9. Now we want to not write this expression with plus 0, so we can just write it as 64 in squared because the additive identity. Now that we have this equation, we want to start getting rid of either the 64 or the 2. Well, because multiplication comes before exponents in reverse PEMDAS, we're going to get rid of the 64 first. So we're going to divide to get rid of what's being multiplied. So we have 64 in squared, and we're going to divide this by 64. And we're going to divide 9 by 64 so that we keep it the scales balanced. Why can we do this? Because the division property of equality. Now we can simplify. 64 divided by 64 simplifies to 1 times n squared. And 9 divided by 64 
simplifies to 0 0.14625. Make sure I have that correct. Now after simplifying, we've, we've got this new equation. So we can, we can justify this and say we got this because we simplified. Now we know that 1 in squared is the same thing as in squared. So over here we can rewrite it as just in squared equals 0 0.140625. Right? And why? Because the, mul the multiplicative identity. Now we want to get rid of this 2. In order to get rid of the 2 since it's an exponent, we've got a square root. So we're going to square root n squared. And if we square root one side, we've got to make sure we square root the other side. And in front of the square root sign, I'm going to include the, the principal root and its opposite because I know that there is going to be two values that give us this number when we square those values. So we can go ahead now and say, okay, we square rooted both sides because the square root property of equality and I'm abbreviating obviously now when we simplify square root and a square these are inverses so they undo undo each other so we're left with into the first power equals plus or minus and now I'm going to use a calculator to figure out what plus or minus what so in my square root feature I'm going to find the square root button and then the calculator is only going to give me the positive or the principal root so I'm, I know that I also have the negative value too that will be part of our solution. And I typed it incorrectly, and we get 0 0.375. So 0 0.375. This is what we get after simplifying. And now we know that n to the first power is the same thing as n equals plus or minus 0 0.375. Y is n to the first power the same thing as n because of the multiplicative identity. Anything times 1 is itself. And then our final answer is n equals, so I'm going to put this in set notation. I'm getting to the bottom. n equals negative 0 0.375 and comma positive 0 0.375. So I've separated the plus or minus out for the positive and the negative, and I put it in set notation with a comma in between. Example number two. So now we can go a little bit faster. We've got to denote our variable expression, our number expression. This is the si this is the only expression that has a variable, so we'll make this the variable expression, we'll make this the number expression. Can't simplify either, so I'm gonna go ahead and start solving. So p squared minus eight equals negative 28. And my first step is to get rid of what's being subtracted by adding. So I've added 8 to both sides. Now I can simplify. Negative 8 plus 8 simplifies to 0. Negative 28 plus 8 simplifies to negative 20. I know that this is the same exact thing as 10p squared without the plus 0 because of the additive identity. Now we need to get rid of the 10 or the 2. Well, because multiplication comes first before the exponent, let's go ahead and and divide to get rid of the multiplication. Now when I divide by 10, I make sure to do it to both sides because the, that's what the division property of equality is. Now we can go ahead and simplify. 10 divided by 10 is 1. P squared. Negative 20 divided by 10 is negative 2. Now we can go ahead and rewrite this without the 1 that's being multiplied in front. Now we're just left with the exponent of 2. So let's go ahead and square root both sides to undo the square. So now that we've square rooted both sides, we can go ahead and simplify. Square root of p squared is p to the first power equals plus or minus the square root of negative 2. So I'm going to use the calculator to do this. Now you can already see there's a negative value inside the square root, and we talked about there is no such real number that gives us a negative 2, but you'll see as we put it in the calculator, um, the calculator is in agreement with us. So square root of negative 2 equals and it's saying expression error. That's because you cannot take the square root of a negative number. So we can continue to simplify. We get p to the first power is the same thing as p because of the multiplicative identity. So what are we putting in set notation? Well, because there is no real solution, then in set notation we're going to say p equals no solution. So when you get a answer with a negative inside the square root, 
your answer is going to be no solution.